That will attract aliens. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions of Corbin. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks for watching. And today we have a video. This is the oldest settlement settlements in South India. The Kiladi excavations. All right. I don't know anything about it, but I do know the South of India is old. Yes. They do have a quite old language. Some they would do. say the eldest. It's true. It would, it, you, some would call it the Rick Siegel of languages. It's true. Uh, because it's so It's been around old. as long as me. Uh, anyways, so let's figure out some knowledge here. <laughs> I think it's funny that knowledge is spelled with a K. I know. English is stupid. How old are the oldest settlements? As old as Rick. 27,000 years Valley old. Civilization, the oldest Indian civilization that we know of, dates back to at least 2600 BCE. It spanned northwestern parts of India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Sometime around 1600 BCE, the Indus Valley civilization faded away. We still don't know why. It was followed by Kobe. the Vedic civilization. Probably. <laughs> another vast civilization that centered around the Gangetic Plains of North India. That lasted until about 500 BCE. But what about South India? Weren't there ancient civilizations in South India too? Heck For yeah. a long time, Woo. people assumed that civilization in South India was no more than 2,300 years old. That's because there was no concrete evidence of any older settlement. No ruins of a city, for example. But many archaeologists rejected that notion. Backing them up, was an ancient corpus of Tamil literature called the Sangam period literature. The poems of Sangam period, composed roughly between 300 BCE and 300 CE, talk about a grand, ancient Tamil civilization. But where was the physical evidence for that civilization? One recent discovery has brought this discussion back into the limelight. We are in the Vaigai River Valley at a place called Kiledi, very close to the city of Madurai. This site is home to one of the most remarkable archaeological excavations in South India in recent times. What is so special about Keeladi? Let's find out. This is cool. In 2015, in a little village called Kiridi on the banks of the river Vaigai near Madurai, archaeologists unearthed a host of ancient artifacts, all dating back to the 6th century BCE. These included potsherds that were inscribed with a script very similar to the graffiti found at the Indus Valley sites. They also found beads made of carnelian, glass, agate and other colourful minerals in unusually large quantities and at single sites. These finds suggest that Kiradi was perhaps some kind of bead warehouse or market. All this created a flutter among scholars because now there was evidence of a structured and literate Tamil society that was at least as old as the 6th century BCE. Mm. But surely there were South Indian settlements older than that? Ironically, the evidence had been right under the nose of the Archaeological Survey of India for nearly 120 years. Between 1899 and 1904, an archaeologist named Alexander Ray had unearthed many ancient artifacts at a place called Adi Chanalur, about 200 kilometers south of Kiradi on the banks of Porunai River. Porunai is also called the Tamirabarani River and it is mentioned in the Tamil Sangam literature as well as the Ramayana and Mahabharata. The excavations at Adi Chanalur unearthed ancient skeletons, burial urns, gold ornaments and bronze and iron tools. Unfortunately, in the next hundred years, there was no follow-up to Ray's work. In later years, there was heavy quarrying around Adi Chanalur and a lot of the artifacts were lost forever. But in 2005, the Archaeological Survey of India returned to the site with better tools for excavation and analysis. Carbon dating of the artifacts shows them to be as old as 905 BCE. Recently, a grain of rice found in a burial urn on the banks what? of the river you found Pune a grain of rice? dated to 1155 BCE. It is now suggested that this site is even 3,500 years old. 
This makes Adi Chanalur one of the most ancient sites excavated in India. Perhaps the most telling discoveries Mom? at Adi Chanalur were the skeletons that Looks were dug great. up from the ancient burial sites. You would know. DNA analysis of the skeletons revealed that only 8% of them were of the local Dravidian race. The rest were a mix of Ouch. races from Europe, <laughs> That's Africa, get in. and the Far East. The investigators seem to be staring at an ancient multiracial international symmetry that was at least 2,500 years old. There was another odd observation. Many of the skulls had a clear depression of yeah. the eyebrows, almost like a third eye. What could explain all this? We now know that the depression in the skulls was not an inherited racial feature, but a deformity caused by the Streptococcus bacteria. Oh. It causes a swelling called the Pott's Puffy Tumor. Do you know who's most vulnerable to this condition? Sailors and deep sea divers. Wow. About 25 I kilometers no from Adi Chanalur is a place called Kurkai, an ancient port city of the Kingdom of the Pandyas. 2,000 years ago, it was an international harbour and one of the ancient world's greatest pearl export centres. Korkai pearls were famous worldwide and people from all over the world sailed in to trade here. Many of them stayed on for extended periods. Sangam period literature even tells us of the Pandya kings employing Greeks, Romans and other foreigners as mercenary bodyguards. When they died, they must have been buried here. This explains the skulls of people belonging to multiple mm. places. But the biggest revelation from all the recent excavations along the Waigai and Porunai rivers is that not only were these settlements really, really old, but they were also fairly advanced as a society. Take a look at these iron tools found in Adi Chanalur. They're quite special. You may have heard of Damascus steel swords. Mm -hmm. They were extremely prized in the first millennium and were known for their toughness and resistance to shattering. They were called Damascus swords because they were made in Damascus. But guess where the steel ingots for these swords came from? India, specifically Adi Chanalur and later from Sri Lanka. It was called Wood's Steel and in 500 BCE, it was produced in Kodumanal near Erode. Now, Wood's is a word which most probably came from Wook, which came from uh, the Tamil go word Go woke, go Rukh, broke, am I right? Literally meaning <laughs> melt. This steel had a very high carbon content, which gave it great strength. Over time, the technique of producing this steel was forgotten. Today, we have no idea how it was made with the tools available back then. For its time, it was technologically very advanced. It meant that metallurgists from these early settlements could build kilns that could generate the high temperatures that such smelting required. So we now have ample evidence of the existence of an ancient, literate and fairly advanced Tamil civilization that dates back to at least 1155 BCE. But when it comes to human habitation, the available evidence takes us back thousands of years. Close to Kiridi is a village called Agaram, where they found microlithic stone tools dating back to the Neolithic period. That is roughly between 8,000 and 3,000 wow. BCE. But even Agaram Almost pales in comparison to yet another discovery made in these parts nearly 150 years ago. Did you know that the oldest ever human tool discovered in India was found in a suburb of Chennai? I did not. This stone from the Egmore Museum in Chennai may look ordinary, but it is in fact a hand axe from the Stone Age and it dates back at least 200,000 years. In 1863, a young geologist of the Geological Survey of India, a man named Robert Bruce Foote, discovered some oddly shaped stones at Palavaram, a suburb of present-day Chennai. Now, Foote was no ordinary geologist. He was conversant with archaeology and anthropology and was an accomplished landscape artist too. He immediately guessed that these stones were not naturally shaped but chiseled no, by look human chiseled, hand. Yeah. Look they hammered. were hand axes crafted by Paleolithic humans at least 200,000 years before present time. Until this discovery, no one had suspected that human evolution in India was this old. Four months after his first discovery, Robert Foote found more stone tools at Adirampakam, about 60 kilometers from Chennai. Further research confirmed that this was not just the hand axe that Bruce Foote found is the oldest ever human tool discovered in India. This discovery is so significant that there is even an official period in proto-history named after it. This prehistoric society was officially named Madrasian culture after the old name of Chennai, Madras. All this suggests that people have been living in these parts for a very, very long time. 
So while Kiradi has certainly pushed back the accepted timelines of South Indian settlements, it is neither the first find nor the oldest of such sites in Tamil Nadu. But Kiradi itself still has a lot more to offer. We spoke to Dr. Amarnath of the Archaeological Survey of India, the man who was at the forefront of the Kiradi excavations. Kiradi is not yet open, opened uh, in full fledged. Is covered only 10% uh, or 12% of the entire area. With that evidence only we are now speaking of that. My point of view try to expose further and we can get so many evidences not only at Kiledi, try to see other places in the uh, Vaige River Basin as well as the Kaveri River Basin as well as Palaru and uh, Tamarabadi. Tamarabani, we are uh, carrying out only for burial sites, try to find out some habitation sites. So that habitation site relates to Kiladi also. So interconnecting the sites can give, certainly give the evolution. The Kiladi excavations have certainly generated much excitement in South India. They have thrown up many new questions and opened up many exciting possibilities. It's almost certain that more digs will bring us more answers and many, many more questions as well. Mm. Really nice video. Really cool. Uh, I love learning stuff about like old civil because it's absolute mind boggling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just how old <laughs> and like we don't even know a percentage of old civilizations, really. <laughs> like, we see some stuff and we're like, yeah, we know. And we're like, no, we don't. We don't. Because <laughs> there's so much that has been lost yeah. due to, obviously, just natural time. Time. Yeah. Like, they're just now finding these massive, massive civilizations in the Amazon. Because the... Um, because the, the forest had overgrown them mm. once the European settlers came and killed... Oh, Basically yeah, yeah. Because of uh, like smallpox. Right. It ravished them. And so they're finding these massive, massive civilizations and towns that have been covered in the middle of the Amazon mm. just now. Mm. <laughs> like, so imagine all these other things that are underground because of time. And yeah, and things that just over time uh, were, were just pulverized. Yeah. You just, you won't find them because they're just pulverized. Um, yeah, amazing. Fires. And a really Bloods. well, everything about that video, the information, the way it's put together, the, the music they had playing in the background, the two hosts, really, really nice, well put together. Yeah, I enjoyed that video. Yeah. Uh, if there's other informational videos of this information or other information we can learnage it, uh, please uh, information us. The I'm smart. Learnage. <laughs>